Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over the question Cheating Detection from Google Code Jam 2021 Qualification Round, and specifically the solution by Kason48 and understanding mathematically why it makes sense. Um, so actually after you go... Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm also assuming that people are fam uh, familiar with calculus and integrals and uh, weighted average, uh, so just just making sure. And also that people have already read the problem and understand um, what is uh, what is the problem and maybe have tried it out as well. Um, so okay, so once we actually download the the code uh, from case on forty eight, uh, I've actually added some comments as well here, uh, some annotations. So first of all, there's some standard stuff, just uh, writing down the number of people, number of questions, doing some uh, getting the input. Um, then basically he's telling up the number of, like for each person, the number of uh, questions they got correct. And then for each question, the number of people they got correct. Remember that the skill of a person is uh, the same for all the questions they solve. And the uh, difficulty level of a question is the same for all people that solve them. Uh, so we're able to calculate these statistics and that will be useful later on to rank uh, these two. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're basically ranking the questions and the people. People, we're ranking them from lowest to highest score, and questions, we're ranking them from easiest to hardest. Um, so basically, this gives us an array of the indices uh, ordered in terms of the, the rank. Um, then there's this uh, double for loop where it iterates first over each person, and for each person, basically has a bunch of variables and that is going to tally up the number of, of zeros, uh, basically the number of people, number of questions that this person go wrong and the number of uh, questions that they got right and this other variable that we'll talk about. Um, then for each person, basically it iterates through all the questions. If they got a, a one, and by the way, it iterates through the questions in order based on this ranking. So basically it, it's iterating through the questions from most from easiest to most difficult. So it starts with the easiest question and keeps on checking. Did they get it right? If they got it right, it keeps a tally of number that got right. If got wrong, then keeps a tally of number that got wrong. And then the interesting part here is that it keeps this inv um, variable uh, where it's keeping track. It's adding it the number of questions that were easier than this one that they got wrong. So basically any time you get a question right, you check the number of questions that they got wrong that were easier than this question that they got right, which, you know, I guess uh, would inspire some suspicion, I guess. Um, and then uh, we keep uh, t that tally. Uh, and that's especially interesting because, you know, for a, for the cheater, they will have a, a very large number of, like, very difficult questions that they'll have um, uh, correct. And so basically this will end up being a, a, a larger number uh, just because uh, it adds, you know, all the, you know, um, questions that they got wrong and then um, that were less difficulty than those really high uh, difficulty questions. Another thing here is that there's actually some uh, normalization here. So it's actually dividing that total by uh, the total number of questions the person got wrong and also dividing by the number of questions they got right. Um, so actually this is equivalent to basically if we divided this uh, here, basically this is equivalent to F being basically the percent of questions that a, that a person got wrong that were easier than a question he or she got right out of all questions you have he or she got wrong. Um, basically average over all questions uh, you know, they got right. Um, this person got right. And then, so basically, um, let, let's, let's actually look at why this makes sense. So, first of all, let's take a look at the, at the, the function that defines the probability um, that someone got a question correct based on the difference between a person's skills and question difficulty, um, which is given in the problem. And we also know that the cheater half of the time got the, got the question correct and half of the time does the normal procedure. So we know that the probability that they get something right is this. You know, where again, this is a function of 
the difference between the difficult the skill and the difficulty. Then I guess here I have like a little slider. And by the way, uh, you can either go to this link or see in the description to see this uh, Desmos. Um, then based on this, uh, we can show the probability that a person of this skill would have gotten a question right or wrong depending on the difficulty. So in this case, the x-axis is the difficulty. Um, and the... Um, and here we show like what percentage of qu questions of that difficulty uh, someone of a certain skill level got right and got wrong. So you see that someone with a very low uh, skill level, uh, you know, gets you know half of the uh, easiest questions r uh, right and half wrong, but then gets basically almost zero of the toughest questions and so on. Uh, however, this is for like a non-cheating uh, participant. However, for a cheating participant, you can see that this uh, is much higher, right? And here we can see both of these together. Okay, um, so basically if we, if we go back to the code, uh, again, we're looking at the number of, of questions uh, that they got wrong that were more that e that were easier than the ones that they got right, um, and then dividing by this total number of questions that that went uh, that were wrong, which is means that if we just move this basically over here, uh, the total, uh, this basically it just means uh, that it's adding the um, the percentage the percentage of the questions um, that were easier, basically, that, that were wrong, that were easier as compared to the um, total number that were wrong in total, right? So the way we can think of this is, let's say that uh, we have a person like that. Uh, let's say that we this uh, person got this question right. <clears throat> so basically, we, we see that this, uh, basically, that is uh, like taking the percentage of this area uh, that is uh, to the left of this of this value. So all of that is basically kind of like triangle thing, um, and then it's adding it, tallying it up to this um, uh, to this value here. And actually, once we divide by the number of questions that we got right, we're actually getting the average of that. Um, so basically, we're getting like, so to speak, like the average of the percentage of the red that is to the left of a certain point over you know the total red um, and that is actually computed at every time they get something right so it's equivalent to actually getting the um, weighted average of, of that so let, let's actually start by computing the a percentage of questions that they got wrong as a function of question difficulty um, so basically as I mentioned like the the percentage uh, of, the, of the red that is to the left divided by the total as a function of, of question difficulty for this given uh, skill level, right? Um, so actually, if we, if we integrate uh, in order to get that and get that percentage, we see that we get this. Um, and what's interesting is that that curve is basically exactly the same as the one we would get uh, when we do it for the for the cheating um, participant, and what's uh, why that happens is if you see this red um, red for the uh, cheater as well as red for the non-cheater, uh, the only difference is that one is twice as big as the other one, but other than that they have the same proportion, so they're like similar figures. So the the percentage of, of to the left compared to the total area is going to be the same for both which is a, an, a key fact that will help later. Uh, because this is um, this adds just more, more consistency to the, to the metric that they add. So basically, this, uh, once we have this, this curve that tells us, either for a cheater or for a, a um, person that didn't cheat, the percentage of questions that, they, that were easier um, that they got wrong out of all the questions that they got wrong uh, as, as you go down the, the ranking of 
um, difficulty of questions. Basically, this uh, this tells us the um, this part over here, right? It's the n zero. It just tells us to the left divided by the total n zero over here. Uh, and so, how do we average those? Basically, um, which is the same as adding them with every one, adding them and then dividing them uh, here by n one. That's the equivalent of doing here a weighted average of this value, uh, where the weight is the um, these green things, right? So for the uh, for the cheater, it would be this bigger one, and for the non-cheater, it would be this smaller one. So and that's going to be the weight that we're going to give this curve. Um, so actually, if we see, we can uh, normalize these curves uh, so that they are uh, because once they're normalized, we can just use them as weights. We can just uh, multiply them. And those are going to be the ones uh, that are going to be the weights in order to get the weighted average of these uh, curves um, for the non-cheater and the cheater. And again, all of this uh, can be, uh, we can see, you know, for different skill levels. Um, and then once we actually do that, that weighted, um, weighted average of this using the greens as the weights, uh, we can see for the, I just put them as, as little points here. Uh, we can see for the cheater and the non-cheater, this metric, which is equivalent to this, um, uh, to this F, you know, here uh, that is computing in this program. Of course, this, this is, you know, using, you know, smooth curves, right? That assume like a sample of infinite sample size, so to speak. Uh, but basically, that's conceptually the same. Um, so you can see, if we compute this this weighted average, we can see that this is the metric value for the cheater, and this is the metric value for the non-cheater. And we see that they're clearly uh, clearly different. And furthermore, it's like we can actually we can actually create like a discriminating line. And you can see that the cheater is always going to be above this line in this metric, and the non-cheater is going to be below this line in this metric. So this is what allows basically the, um, the solution to have something that that's meaningful and that actually gets high accuracy because I guess again, assuming that you know the sample size gives us enough resolution to kind of like have these values, uh, you know, have this make uh, make sense. Um, then this actually gives us a a uh, metric that perfectly uh, separates uh, cheater from non-cheater. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I think it's it, it was really cool that. Uh, this person managed to, you know, in just uh, just how much, third, almost 14 minutes, able to get uh, this solution. Maybe they just uh, did it as a kind of heuristic, but it's very cool that I think that there that there's a mathematical justification um, for why this metric is able to separate uh, these two. Anyway. Um, you can see in the video description, or you can copy this uh, to, to see those Desmos. Um, and thanks for watching.